everyone, and welcome to a Time Hop special edition here at the Time Shifters Podcast. This is Christopher here with Tom. Yeah. Tom, this film we're talking about today was, it felt both nostalgic and just made me want for the summer. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, we watched a film that's coming to streaming called Back to the Drive-In. This was produced and directed by April Wright. It was shot in the summer of 2021, and the film had some limited theatrical screenings uh, in the summer of 22, and so it's hitting streaming services March 14th, 2023. The film here, during the pandemic, drive-ins became the only safe venue in town. News stories boasted that the drive-ins are back. Well, this documentary goes behind the headlines and spends a whole night with 11 different drive-ins in eight states all across the country. Through this film, we discover these family-owned businesses are actually struggling just like many other brick-and-mortar cinemas. We meet the passionate people who run them and who are fighting to keep their business relevant and profitable as they deal with both the nation continuing to open up and the movie-watching public embracing the age of streaming. The drive-in is something that I am... I'm sorry that it's not something that... I'm sorry it's not the 50s when it comes to the drive-ins. Yeah, um, I've always had a a soft spot for the drive-ins. I mean, I grew up also going to the drive-ins, and it was already in its kind of decline in the 80s. Oh, absolutely. When when I did go, but I have such fond memories because as a little kid, that was when you were one. You were going to get to stay up later. There was something special about just sitting in your car with your family watching the film and it also meant you were going to get snacks that you don't normally get (laughs) (laughs) yes yes because isn't that kind of funny when it comes to the junk food when you go to the movies yeah you usually grab a popcorn or something when you go to the theater or whatever the drive-in it's like just it's extra magical place where it's oh you're going to get a popcorn and i get a coney and uh maybe maybe a foot long or you're going to get a slushy and you're going to get a box of this candy <laughs> because you could go and just sit in your car and eat it. Oh, Maybe yeah. that's why. Oh, and back then to uh, parents taking advantage of the fact that you could bring stuff with you. Uh, that meant I was going to get my 16 ounce bottle of soft drink in the glass bottle. Oh, yes. So, there you go. I always remember that being like extra special. You know, that was not something you did all the time. I don't think I ever got to go to a drive-in as a child. I think my first drive-in experience was probably when I was a teenager going with friends. I, okay. we, my first drive-in was likely, um, what was the one that was here in town near, was it the Oakley? The Oakley. Yeah, that may have actually been my first drive-in experience. Yeah, I know uh, a group of us would go periodically anyway, so... I'm not going to say that was a great experience because I went with like, you know, probably like four other people and there were sort of like three of us crammed in the back seat and <laughs> yeah. trying to watch the film in between people's heads. And I couldn't even tell you what movie it was. Uh, I, I also have fond memory of the Oakley because one of our friends, Carrie, uh, for a time lived in an apartment not more than a block from it. And when they switched over to reception through radio, you could listen to the movie from, <laughs> nice. from her apartment. It was fantastic. <laughs> That's awesome. It was the Oakley Drive-In that I went and saw Twister. Oh, nice. And as every time I went and saw Twister in the theater, the weather turned to shit. <laughs> so it was like a 4D experience. <laughs> well, I know I at least went with you probably three times just to Twister. Yes, but yeah, one of those times was to the Oakley Drive-In, and yes, the weather did turn really nasty. So it was quite the experience. It was it was a fun. That was a fun night. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I have no doubt that, that, that what, especially yeah, no, nothing like actually seeing the weather turn as they get to the scene where the weather turns at a drive-in. <laughs> right. Yes, that's, that's a perfect. Great. A drive-in. I always really enjoyed going to when we as a family would go on vacation, uh, my wife and I used to travel up to uh, Michigan okay. and there's the cherry bowl drive-in okay. and it's one of these drive-ins that has been in operation uh, ever since it opened and it's still going strong. And so we would go and check out, you know, the double feature. I think I went and saw, 
I think I saw Men in Black actually at that drive-in. Wow, nice. Yeah, that was a good one. There was a, and you're up there in Michigan, and you know it's away from all the really big, you know, cities and all that stuff. And there's moments in that where they, you know, they look up into the starry sky, and you can't help but look up yourself, and you see starry sky. It was that's a, another great experience. No, I have recollection of seeing uh, the black hole. Oh, nice. In drive-in, and I also remember seeing Ghostbusters. Oh, very cool. In fact, that was how I saw Ghostbusters for the first time. No kidding. Was my parents taking my sister and I to Ghostbusters at the drive-in. I'm like, that. that I even remember them pre- preparing. Okay, there's going to be a little scary scene, because apparently Dad <laughs> already knew about the, uh, the librarian. Library ghost. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, Ghostbusters, of course, is like my all-time favorite movie, and I would I would go and see it in any venue. Sure. But when it comes down to like those two films that you just mentioned, the Black Hole is that is such a drive-in film. It is. Oh yeah, I, I mean, just imagine being outside, walking around, hearing all of the sound coming from everywhere, from everybody's car, as you're getting to one of the scenes where the meteors that are coming in from space toward the black hole are breaking through the ship. Everything mm-hmm. is glowing bright orange, uh, and it's just lit up this entire area with cars, and you're just kind of hearing all of it from everywhere. It's just so much fun. Yeah, well, I'm just imagining, because the black hole is such... It was 19, what, 79, I guess it was? Yeah, I think so. God. But... It is it is such a 1950s B movie. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it is that was the kind of movie that they were making for drive-ins. Yeah, this was back old in the sci-fi 50s. stuff. Yeah, so yeah, that that would be a fantastic experience in the drive-in. We mentioned this the last night before we weren't recording. We're we're just talking. Where I live here in Cincinnati, I think within a 20 minute drive, I can get to where there used to be a probably i think four different drive-ins right and one of which i could walk to in about 10 minutes you know from my house it's sure. literally right around the corner yep and now of course there's nothing left of any of them you know they're all business parks and parking lots and strip malls and if i wanted to go to a drive-in there are still a couple but it's a 45 minutes to an hour drive and that's just it it kind of takes the the fun out of the uh, adventure having to go that far out of the way. And it's not the getting there; it's the knowing you're already going to leave late, mm-hmm. and, and then you've got another forty five minutes to get home. And I'm going to admit that I am not one. When I think of the drive in, I don't necessarily think of I want to go see the latest box office film. Right. You know I. I kind of want to go see those those B pictures. I want to go see those '50s films, or or even even if it's something in the from the '80s. I just I don't necessarily want to go see the latest superhero special effect extravaganza at the drive-in. No, because I mean, a drive-in theater is inherently compromised as far as trying to take in the film itself. So what you see in a drive-in needs to be almost background to the experience of being at the drive-in. Being at the drive-in is about everything that's at the drive-in almost other than the movie. The movie's just the icing on the cake. It's an experience to go there. Um, you want you usually only go with people you're really close to because you're about to be either trapped in a vehicle or in the surrounding in the immediate area with people that you have to want to be with. <laughs> So uh, it's not like when you go to a movie theater, if you're with somebody, that's it, why it makes good early dating kind of material. You build an experience, but you don't have to talk to each other. Mm-hmm. But at a drive-in, you're going to talk to each other. There's no reason not to. <laughs> right. So you have to be open for the communal experience that is the drive-in. Now the the film back to the drive-in they did focus that a lot on you know the owners of these drive-ins 
as I mentioned in, in the synopsis, you know, they are struggling to kind of stay relevant. They're trying mm-hmm. to do more than just show movies to bring people in. Uh, we saw one owner who, uh, you know, they, they opened early. It was long before, uh, you know, sundown. And they had a, a stage set up and they had a music. They had a band yeah. out uh, performing. And it was, I, I think, some just some local band or something like that. Uh, just to try to um, to bring people in, try to be different, try mm-hmm. to have something. Uh, the one guy's got, you know, he's got a beer garden set up in the back, <laughs> you know, which I thought was very cool. Yeah, and interestingly enough, uh, as watching this, uh, I was both uh, tickled and bemused to, to catch that me here in Baltimore, the local drive-in that is still in existence, Benji's, um, was featured. And I have never, I had never laid eyes on the owner before, but it was, this is not helping the cause of this particular documentary, but he is not your owner (laughs) that is making the experience fun for all. Mm. Yeah, he was the one that I remember in the the documentary, he he mentions that, you know, he's got rules and he expects everyone to follow or you don't go in or you have to leave. Yes. And he and he seems very adamant about everyone following those rules. Yeah, uh, a a little too much. So, uh, as I've described to you and others before, like my experience was showing up way in advance of sun sundown the sun is still high in the sky um we're at least another hour or so before sunset and i we're just trying to get into our spots and of course most people's cars have daytime running lights yeah and and they simply refuse to let you to drive from the ticketing booth to your spot with any lights on in the car, regardless of the fact there's no show yet. <laughs> I'm like, is that the line? Is that the line you really want to push? Is that because you're alienating people? <laughs> right. I then actually, I was surprised in the documentary, it was brought up by another owner how frustrated they are that people don't know how to shut the lights off in the car, period. I, I have no idea how to turn off my, it, or if I can, disable my daytime running lights. It, it, exactly. Uh, and that's the thing. Drive-in theaters were invented when that was not a thing. Right. So, and, and some of them were a little too uh, hard hard on the whole idea that, one, why would you know? How often does that come up? Um, mm-hmm. and, and, two, when you have to do that. I'm like, right. Get to your spot yeah, I, and shut it down. You're fine. Yeah, I believe it was uh, Benji's that often would you'd see people having to put towels over their headlights yeah. and, and shut them in the hood. <laughs> uh, I, I personally, I, after they showed me the trick to get my headlights to turn off, as soon as you're over 10 miles per hour, they immediately pop back on. So they actually stopped me again to make me pull my floor mats out. To put oh, God. <laughs> under my hood and over my headlights just to get to the other end of the road. I'm like, see, honestly, that kind of experience would make me go, you know what? This isn't worth it. I'm leaving. Well, that, that would be my <laughs> point. I'm like, this is a struggling industry. And that's the things that you choose to. It, if we're doing that during the movie or even after it's gone dark, I understand. But but this didn't make any sense and for you to get ugly about it. Um, I had a different experience too, where like I took a picture of the moon and they made me delete it. There's no photography on the premises. (laughs) Oh, and like, I'm not photographing the film. I even showed them the picture. You have to delete it right now. I said, you do know I'm going to walk over there and then I'm going to take the picture again. (laughs) And they're like, you're still going to have to delete it. Like, yeah. Again, is this the lie? <laughs> right. Couldn't you just go, hey, that's a pretty cool picture. Just make sure you don't take one off the screen. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so Benji's didn't look like it was going to be a drive-in that I was going to have a good time at. No. There was a few <laughs> others, though, that they visited that seemed like they've they've got it down right. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
uh, one couple in particular running Quasar, Quasar over looks in like uh, one I'd like to just go to. Period. Yeah, that's over near Omaha, Nebraska. They only just opened. This is a brand new drive-in. Yeah, they opened. This was not a during old, pandemic. Yeah, this was not an old drive-in that they bought or no. This was we're building a new drive-in mm-hmm. that which they opened in 2021. So they are only open a few months. But when this uh, film crew came through and spent time with them, they are both absolutely insane. And I think my people. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Well, it it was clear they knew what they were getting themselves into Mm -hmm. that they, they went in informed. And this is like this is their passion project. And I got the impression they almost don't care if it fully makes its money. Um. Clearly, they had the money to do it. So, but still, you want to see them succeed. They did a really nice job putting their theater together. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, much of the, uh, some of the theater did come from an older theater sure. that they bought uh, parts. I think they bought the screen from an old theater that, had, that was closing mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. But still, the idea of like, yeah, we're going to build and, and put up a brand new, never been here before drive in in the middle of Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, I just, and, and it's, that's fantastic. Essentially their backyard. Right. <laughs> well, and there was another couple that I got the impression they did something kind of similar. Uh, I think it was the field of dreams in, uh, yeah. Toledo, Ohio. I think they had like, like farmland area kind of thing. And they just set up a, a, a drive in. Yep. And, but I think they did that. I think they did that. Maybe many years ago. Sure. Yeah. No. It's uh, it wasn't as it. it wasn't as fresh and new as 2021. Uh, but still, I, I I just love that they are willing to go and take that kind of chance and, and do something like that. Now to, to actually get back to the film itself, uh, the thing I wanted to discuss and found interesting about this is normally things tag documentary um, have a narrative to it. Uh, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they, they've they laid out a plan on what they're trying to convey, how they're going to convey it. They have the information that they put it up. This has no actual interaction whatsoever. This is camera watching these people. They Clearly, they've been interviewed, but we are literally only getting the conversation from them. It takes you even a minute to understand that what we're seeing is essentially a night in the effort of each of these venues. And as they go from venue to venue to venue, it's roughly similar timing at where they are in their day um, Mm -hmm. as they go through it. So you, you don't quite catch that right out of the gate. It just looks like we're randomly talking to people. And it's not very coherent, but then you start to notice, oh, okay, that first section was all about prep. They're they're preparing for receiving their their customers, right? And, and what 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 each uh, theater it has to go through for their particular area, yeah, and, to, to to get ready and the different trials and tribulations that they might have because you know some of them have all that we had a we had a thunderstorm an hour ago. It's mm-hmm. gone now, but the damage is done. Uh, one in Maine that was dealing with fog coming in off the ocean. Which I would already kind of think, uh, Maine is going to be a tough place to have a drive-in. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, and that's what they're doing. Is uh, I like the build after you get the concept. It feels comfortable. I'm like, oh, okay, we're checking in on each of these, where they are in their day. They're talking about the challenges that they face, the love that they have for it, but the the increasing angst of trying to run something you love that's not getting a lot of love. Um, mm-hmm. and, and those that go to drive-ins are passionate about going to drive-ins. Um, I would love to get to one more often, but at the moment, it's me. I'm not going to go to one by myself. Um, it's like that, and then you start to hear that this is all taking place right at that turn in the uh, in the pandemic things are opening up like you described earlier and now they're seeing what little burst of energy they got out of the pandemic is now not having 
it, it, it's reversing and now they're all suspect on what's going to happen next. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you talk about the people that go to the, the drive and some of the people that go being as passionate, um, towards the end, uh, they're visiting, um, mission Tiki mm -hmm. that was outside of LA. And this was, I think, a big four-screen drive-in, huge yeah, it place, was huge, and incredibly laid out. I mean, this was primo. This was an impressive-looking place. Mm -hmm. And they were talking to someone who has been coming to the drive-ins for for years. He loves the, the Mission Tiki and all this and everything. And then they dropped the bomb that the owner is selling the property. Not just selling it, but it's going to a developer. Right. Yeah. So it is closing down as a drive-in. And you, then they go to this guy that they were just speaking to, and you can tell that they just dropped this bomb on him, and he's almost crying. Yeah, he's gut punched by this. Yeah, he's he's emotionally distraught at the at this news. Yeah, and, and for the uh, well, I I wasn't even in town, but when I found out the Oakley was closing, um, that hurt. I'm like that was a that was a tried and true place to go mm -hmm. and have a good time. And it's yeah. not going to be there. <laughs> and it wasn't even what I would call like a good drive. -in. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was rough. Yeah. It was in the middle of town. I mean, it was literally like neighborhoods all around it. Uh, you, I, I seem to remember even the drive getting in. You felt like, you know, if you were just an inch too far, either way, you're going to whack your mirror kind of thing, <laughs> getting out of the drive. It's not paved. And the gravel was always super lumpy, like... You would, you could tell they would get uh, water holes, uh, mm -hmm. and that would just render it work terrible to drive across. But I still wanted to go. Yeah, yeah. No, this uh, documentary just it, it did a really nice job, kind of just shedding some light on on what these p people have to go through mm -hmm. to, to to set everything up to uh, to keep try to get people to keep coming in. And and the fact that they are since it's a drive-in, they are a you know they're a slave to the weather. You can have a thunderstorm in the afternoon, and that's going to ruin your night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it you know, be. even if it's all clear, it could be all cleared and everything's beautiful. It's it it still does its damage because people go, oh, it's raining today. We'll do something different, and they make different plans and they don't go to that drive-in. And instead of getting five hundred cars, they get a hundred, maybe seventy-five. Or less. You know. um, well, yeah, and as they, you got to see, like, right at the end. This this was an interesting documentary, too, because when it ends, it's not over. <laughs> they, right. They go into the credits, and you get a whole bunch more. Yeah, um, you get a few other drive-ins they didn't actually uh, highlight in the actual film. They get some of that. They also go over one of the ones that we did see, like, literally the, the next day or something. Um, they had a horrible storm come through. And it's underwater. Mm -hmm. um, like, you don't know that they'll recover kind of underwater. Yeah, I think that was one of the ones down in Texas. I don't know if it was the yeah. Coyote or the Galaxy, but I think it was one of the ones in Texas. Yeah. But I think they did say that the waters did recede and they were able to c carry on. Right, but, but uh, th they would have suffered damage at the uh, concession stand because that water was up pretty high. Oh, and Brazos was another one in Texas. Yes. I think they did yeah. three different ones in Texas. Texas is littered with driving yeah. theaters. Apparently. And also uh, the fact, and, and highlighting kind of the low profit margin mm -hmm. that any movie theater is. I mean, the one guy, I don't know how much of it was a joke, was, you know, it's held up like $5. Five dollars. <laughs> like, that's what we make. Everything else goes to the studios yeah. <laughs> you know, for having those films. I remember wasn't that long ago, maybe about a decade, 15 years ago or so, the studios announced that they weren't going to distribute the 35mm film anymore. Yeah. And that, of course, is what drive-ins and movie theaters all around the country were using. And so they had to switch to digital. Mm -hmm. That's a very expensive proposition, especially for someone that is barely scraping by, even more so with a drive-in when you're only open part of the year. That was a, a big deal. There was a lot of drive-ins that couldn't make that switch. And there was a, a lot of big um, grassroots uh, movements and uh, 
what do you call it, uh, crowdsourcing kind of thing to try to get uh, money for certain for a lot of, uh, of the drive-ins and everything so they could afford to get those digital projectors. Well, yeah, because, I mean, you're talking an investment somewhere between fifty dollars and $100,000. Right. And for a lot of them, that, that's their summer take. Yeah, yeah, if they're lucky. If they're lucky. <laughs> if they have a good, a good summer. Can you imagine some of these summers where it's just rainy every weekend kind of thing? Uh, and, and while we're on the topic of what it costs to do these things, the thing uh, I was, I, I like that it got mentioned. It's sad that it's a thing, but they were talking about um, a, availability of employees, both yes, both yes. from the per, um, from from the perspective of, well, they never know how many they need to have on hand because. Mm-hmm. If they have too many and not enough cars, they can't afford to pay everybody their wages or they're understaffed and then they get too many cars and now they can't service everyone properly. And right. just talking about the way the job market works now, anyways, people would take a job and then they're just gone. They just disappear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think one of the guys was saying he actually had a, a no call, no show. Yeah. And he was pointing out, like, back, it wasn't that long ago, like, only a couple of years, you'd never get a no-call, no-show. Um, that'd be, like, one in 50 people that might do that. Um, and now they're running into it almost monthly. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a shame. Yeah. But they also talked to several people that have been there, both young and old, who were like, this is the, literally the greatest job I've ever had. Mm-hmm. I was impressed at how many of them basically they started as they uh, they started a, a, as a teenager working for the place and then made it their life's work. Right, and now they own it. Yeah, yeah, that was incredible. There was the one guy that I felt particularly bad for. I can't remember which one, and I think it was one of the places that shut down at the end of it. But the the guy was pretty down on the whole thing during the entirety of the uh, documentary. Like, mm. he grew up doing this, but it's just not the business that that it was back when he started. And he right. has been doing this for over 25 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now you just kind of feel, um, yeah, that kind of sucks. Sorry, man. Yeah. And the fact that this is a, a even if it's not necessarily the same fam- family, it, mm. it's a generational sort of thing. There mm. was a, a one woman who, you know, heard her husband bought the drive-in from an older couple who was ready to retire. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, they're in their 20s or 30s or whatever, and so they buy this thing, and now they've run it for 30 years, and now they're in that same position. You know, they're like, we want to retire. We want to be able to walk away, and what do we do? We can't just... They don't want to just close it. Right. And they have to try to find someone that will take it over and then run it for you know, hopefully another 20, 30 years right. and et cetera, and keep it going. And in this market, that's a hard thing to do. That's a hard sell. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting documentary. Uh, mm-hmm. Very glad we got a chance to check it out. Um, yeah. The drive-ins, it's just, there's something magical about a drive-in. Uh, so many of us have probably never been to one mm-hmm. and that's unfortunate. Uh, it's definitely, if you ever get the opportunity to t- take it and, <laughs> and have that experience. I challenge you, our listeners, that sometime <laughs> this summer, find the nearest drive-in that you possibly can, take your closest friends, family, and go. Go take this in for as long as it's still a thing. Uh, either help get it back on its legs or take it in while it's here because it is an experience. It, 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 you can't really know it till you've done it. Right. And to prep for it, Watch back to the drive-in. It's hitting all the streaming services this March. Uh, it, it give you an idea of uh, what you're going to be in for and, and and why it's so important for you to you know give these people a little bit of your hard-earned money. Thank you, April Wright, for uh, putting this one out there. This was uh, this was a good watch. Yep, absolutely. Well, that's going to do it for this little time hop. Uh, we'll be back in a week with a full episode. Until then, we'll just say goodbye. See ya. See ya.